Hi there, and welcome to the weekly wrap up for this Friday, September 6, 2024. Thanks for showing up and being here as always. We appreciate the support. And once again, please do like, subscribe, and share, and hit that personalization button so you don't miss a moment of these podcasts. So this week's shows, we had Bill Holter, really good discussion on the overall financial landscape. Uh, Derek Johnson, always good to hear his laws and orders, musings, and other things. And then, of course, the one and only SG Anon. For next week, we have an exciting lineup for the second part of, of the week of September, Greg Manorino. Always good to have him back. Yes, you've asked for him, and he's making a return engagement, Jim Willie. That will be a Rumble exclusive, so don't look for that on YouTube. That will be only on Rumble based on the nature of the content, what we discuss. And, of course, Andy Sheckman from Miles Franklin for our, our monthly catch-up on all things financial. Now, I do want to mention to you, we had every intention of bringing on uh, the wonderful Carolyn Dennis, but she has told us that the Lord has showed her out of obedience to cessate from doing podcasts right now and just focus on what he's got her to do with Audra on their respective channel. So we want to respect and honor that. We're very much on terrific terms and we still talk routinely and we pray for her and uh, that the Lord would continue to speak to her in her remaining obedience during this critical season. And we continue to wish her all the best. And if God does in fact, bring her uh, permission to come back on. We will happily accommodate that. Okay, now on to the headline news. Tyson Foods, former CFO John Randall Tyson is not returning to his position after a DWI charge. Tyson, an heir to the founder, uh, was suspended following the charge in June. Kirk Calloway, who is the interim CFO, will now take over as permanent CFO, according to the company. Tyson Foods' chief financial officer is out on his job, but not out of the company. Uh, the date that Elon Musk's social media site X is formerly known as Twitter will begin to shutter its longtime San Francisco headquarters has been set the date according to a report. A source familiar told Fortune that X informed employees in an email on Thursday that the office on Market Street would close permanently on September 13th, and the outlet noted the date just happens to be on a Friday. Verizon has agreed to buy Frontier Communications for $20 billion, the company announced on Thursday. This is the latest in a series of massive telecom mergers and strengthens Verizon fiber business in order to better compete with rivals such as AT&T. The merger is scheduled to close in about 18 months, subject to frontier shareholders and regulatory, regulatory approval. Verizon will pay $38.50 per share in cash, which is a 30%, 37%, excuse me, premium to where Frontier traded before news leaked off a pending deal. More than 440 people are at risk of redundancy at a Mitsubishi factory in West Lothian. The Mitsubishi Electric Factory in Livingston has been making heat pumps for nearly 30 years and employs roughly 1,600 people. The firm confirmed 443 jobs were at risk and blamed, quote, widespread downturn in demand for its products from the site. A college in Devon has closed its degree awarding courses with immediate effect, leading to job losses and disruption for students. Dartington Hall Trust, which runs Shoemaker College in Tottens, said it could no longer fund the school due to, quote, incurring substantial monthly losses. Major banks have closed 41 branches in just two weeks as the shift towards online banking continues. Major banks such as Bank of America, Chase, and Wells Fargo were among those shuttering locations. More than 10,000 hotel workers at 24 hotels stretching from Boston to the west coast of Hawaii went on strike early Sunday morning, disrupting travel during a busy Labor Day weekend. The hotels are reportedly still open, but guests will deal with a skeleton staff unable to provide full services. Unite Here, the union representing the striking worker, says they are striking not just for better pay, but also better working conditions, including the return of automatic daily room cleaning that many hotels have dropped during the pandemic. General Motors on NYSE has announced the closure of its manufacturing facility in Ecuador, citing increased competition from local firms, according to Reuters. The factory, which is located in Quito, will cease production on Friday, this Friday, September 6. The OBB plant in Quito accounts for 51% of Ecuador's automotive output, the report claims. This closure will impact more than 300 workers who for years assembled Cadillac and Chevrolet vehicles. Goldman Sachs, a major global investment bank, is planning to lay off roughly 3 to 4% of its workforce, which will impact roughly 1,800 employees. These layoffs are part of the company's regular practice of reviewing its workforce annually. In these reviews, employees who are underperforming 
uh, or whose roles are no longer needed are let go. This process is typically in large financial institutions, which continually adjust to staffing in order to maintain efficiency and profitability. The U.S. has seized Venezuelan President Nicolas Maduro's plane, Justice Department announced on Monday. A Homeland Security uh, investigations led discovered that the plane was in the Dominican Republic, the source said. Um, after the U.S. government seized the plane, it was flown to Florida on Monday, according to the source. Maduro was not on board, the source said. The plane is the Venezuelan equivalent to Air Force One, and flight records show that it is a Dassault 900. German automotive giant Volkswagen said on Monday that it could not rule out factory closures and redundancies as it looks to cut back a reported $4 billion more than originally planned in a sweeping savings plan. The board said that the current strategy of offering reduced contracts and severance packages to employees nearing retirement was no longer sufficient to meet the company's targets and announced it was terminating a job security program in which had been in place since 1994. Apple has reportedly laid off 120 workers from three of its retail locations within Spain. The employees from Puerta del Sol in Madrid, Pasilla de Gracia in Barcelona and Valencia have been urged to sign a termination document that waives their right to litigation and including in a confidentiality agreement. A former bank chief in Lebanon was arrested this week on charges relating to corruption and financial crimes. On Tuesday, three judicial officials in Lebanon announced that Riyadh Salame, the former governor of Lebanon's central bank, was detained after he was questioned on several corruption cases. Salome began serving as the head of Lebanon Central Bank in 1993 and held the position for nearly 30 years until his resignation in 2019. Greta Thunberg has been arrested during a Palestinian protest in Denmark. The Swedish climate activist, 21, has joined an occupation of a University of Copenhagen building as students call for it to boycott Israeli universities. Sharing footage of police on her Instagram story, Thunberg said police have been called violently entering the building with a ram wearing assault rifles. Lyft said that it is further reducing its workforce in a new wave of layoffs as it restructures its bikes and scooters operation. The ride hailing company on Wednesday said that the move will reduce its operating costs as it focuses resources on its core business. Lyft will cut 1% of total employees and expects between 34 million to 46 million in charges tied to the layoffs. Most of these charges will be booked within the third quarter in the remaining of the following quarter. A popular ice cream company that manufactures Hershey's cakes has declared bankruptcy months after it was forced to recall contaminated products. Totally Cool Incorporation, a Maryland-based frozen treat maker, filed for Chapter 11 bankruptcy protection on August 23rd. Apart from Hershey's ice cream and cakes, the manufacturer also produces Friendly's, Taharka Brothers, Dolceza, Abilene's Frozen Bakery, Jenny's, and Chipwich products. The announcement comes after tests revealed that its products could be contaminated with listeria dating back to June. Hunter Biden is attempting to resolve his federal tax evasion case in California with a plea where he maintains his innocence but will accept punishment, his lawyers announced in court. Thursday, moments before the jury selection was scheduled to begin. The arraignment won't be final until Judge Mark Scarcy, a Trump appointee who is presiding over the tax case, gives his stamp of approval in open court. The court is now on break and will resume at 2 p.m. East Stand Eastern Standard Time. Now here, as of, the, as of the time of this broadcast, are the latest precious metals and oil update. Gold holding at $2,541.20, Silver at $29.10, Brent crude oil at $72.77. And now for the latest resignations and notable deaths. SAP said on Monday that its chief technology officer, Jurgen Miller, will leave the company by the end of September after he acted inappropriately at a prior company event. In the interim, SAP said chief executive officer Christian Klein will take over responsibility for most of the technology and innovation board area that Mueller leads up. The company's global security and cloud compliance team will become a part of the customer services and delivery board area under Thomas Sosrig. Steve Silberman, ally of the neurodivergent community dies at age 66. 
NHL player Johnny Gaudreau and his younger brother were killed Thursday night when they were hit by a suspected drunken driver while riding bicycles in their home state of New Jersey, police report. Gaudreau, 31, and brother Matthew, 29, are Carney's Point, New Jersey natives, and were in the area for their sister Katie's wedding scheduled for Friday in Philadelphia, at which they were to be groomsmen. The writer of the cartoon series Danger Mouse, Brian Truman, has died, his son has announced. Posting on Facebook, his son Jonathan Truman said his Manchester-born father had died in the hospital on Sunday evening after a short illness at the age of 92. Irish Premiership ref referee Keith Kennedy has passed away at the age of 33. Kennedy began refereeing in 2007 and officiated his first Irish League match at the age of 21. He took charge of the 2017 Irish Cup final between Linfield and Coleraine and was a FIFA qualified official for a number of years. According to Bloomberg, J. Richard Munro, the former chairman and chief executive officer of Time Inc., who helped create the world's largest media and entertainment organization, has died, uh, excuse me, through a merger uh, in 1989 with Warner Communications, has died. He was 93. He died on August 11th in hospice care in Naples, Florida. The New York Times reported, citing Monroe's son, Mac. The case was, excuse me, the cause of death was melanoma. Jackie Windsor, a sculptor whose painstakingly crafted pieces made of bricks, wood, copper, and cement that feel like riddles that are impossible to unravel, has died at the age of 82. Her sisters, Maxine Holmberg and Gloria Christie, and her extended family confirmed her death on Tuesday of this week, saying that she died of a stroke. Meg Henderson, who has died at age of 76, was a Scottish journalist and author best known for Finding Peggy in 1994, a memoir of her poverty-stricken Glaswegian childhood, and an investigation of the circumstances surrounding the death, age 36, of her beloved Aunt Peggy. James Darren, a teen idol who helped ignite the 1960s surfing craze as a charismatic beach boy, paired off with Sandra Dee in the hit film Gidget, died on Monday this week at the age of 88. <clears throat> Darren died in his sleep at a Los Angeles hospital. His, sin, his son, Jim Morey, told news outlets. Morey told The Hollywood Reporter that Darren was supposed to have an aortic valve replacement, but unfortunately was too weak for said surgery. The music industry is mourning the loss of talent manager Jason uh, Hobdy, who passed away on Friday, August 30th at the age of 40. Hobdi, a Bronx native, was known for his work with a roster of notable artists, including Her, Maida, Elijah Blake, and Tone Stith. Rapper Fat Man Scoop died after reportedly collapsing during a concert Friday night in Connecticut. His family confirmed his death in an Instagram post on Saturday. He was 53. A charity fundraiser who became the first person to complete a marathon in a bionic suit after breaking her back in a horse riding accident has died in the Middle East at the age of 44. In Ramallah, according to Reuters, Israeli troops handed the body of a Palestinian man arrested hours earlier within the occupied West Bank to Palestinian health authorities on Monday. A major operation in the flashpoint city of Jenin continued for a sixth day. Palestinian Red Crescent said it had received the body of 58-year-old Ayman Rahid Abdid, from the village of Kaferdan, just outside Jenin, after he was arrested around dawn on Monday. The director of the Wissam Bakir Hospital in Jenin said that the body bore signs of beatings and torture. Claire Lomas, who was paralyzed from the chest down since 2007, died following an accident in Jordan on August 22nd, the Melton Times has reported. Ms. Lomas, who broke her neck back in ribs and punctured a lung when her horse threw her off uh, as she took part in an Osburton horse trials in Nottinghamshire 17 years ago. She raised hundreds and thousands of pounds for charity. Siegfried Lorenz has died at the age of 78, was an intelligent and refined German baritone with a warm and pleasing voice whose career fell under the shadow of Dietrich Fischer Deschkau, the preeminent leader singer of the post-war years. His visits to this country were few though, he was known to aficionados through his recordings and radio broadcasts. Michel Garard, a French chef who brought a light inventive touch to fine dining as a creator of Nouvelle Cuisine, then helped pioneer a sophisticated but low calorie conscious approach to health food while directing the kitchen at his family run spa has died at the age of 91. His death was announced by his assistant and by the mayor of Eugénie Lisbonne, the tiny village in Southwestern France 
where Mr. Girard lived and cooked for nearly half a century. They said he died overnight between August 18th and 19th, but did not cite a cause. The poet Tom Morgan, who died age 80 on August 10th, was an urbane, witty, and companionable observer of Belfast and Irish life, as well as a teacher and proud father and grandfather. Houston, Texas reports that Wayne Graham, who coached the Rice baseball team to seven College World Series appearances and the 2003 National Championship, has died. He was 88. The university announced that Graham died Tuesday night in Austin, did not provide a cause of death. <clears throat> Former Cardiff City, Leeds, and Ivory Coast defender Saul Bamba has tragically passed away at just 39 years old. He was previously diagnosed with non-Hodgkin lymphoma back on Christmas Eve in 2020, but was believed to be in the clear. Radio presenters Tony Blackburn and Ken Bruce are among those who have paid tribute to the BBC radio producer and pop master co-creator Phil Swern, who has died at the age of 76. An SAS hero who took part in the Iranian embassy siege and helped in raids during the Falklands War has died at the age of 82. John Thompson, Warren officer, died on Saturday evening after a period of ill health. His death was announced in a post shared by the chief executive of a charity that provides uh, career advice to military veterans and their family members. Linda Deutsch, a special correspondent for the Associated Press, who for nearly 50 years wrote glittering first drafts of history from many of the nation's most significant criminal and civil trials. Charles Manson, O.J. Simpson, Michael Jackson, among others, has died on Sunday. She was 80. A promising soccer player has passed away in Honduras after a battle with dengue. Julio Hernandez died Sunday in a hospital in Tequipagla, where he was receiving treatment for dengue symptoms. His club, Alancho FC, which plays in the top division, Liga Nacional de Football Profesional de Honduras, confirmed his death in a statement. The New Jersey Devils are mourning the loss of Vladimir Bure. Bure was a member of the organization from 1999 to 2010 and was a part of the Stanley Cup championships between 1990, 2000, and again, 2000, 2003. Bure, who served as the Devils conditioning coach, passed away at the age of 73 in Miami, he was the father of NHL players Pavel and Valerie Bure. And that concludes the notable deaths and resignations. Now on to the commentary section. Folks, I want to remind you that we are in a season of vindication. Consequently, we are seeing a lot of people with regrets. Regrets about their past, about their present, and regretting that they've been mean and judgmental and dismissive of us uh, trying to help wake them up in the past people will eventually see the error of their ways, whether it's now or later on. The key I have found for all of you, and probably many of you know, is to be as gracious as you can, regardless of how extremely difficult it may be, friends, family, et cetera. There's also, if you haven't noticed, some of the comments and some of the passive aggressive feedback of certain people, an extreme amount of jealousy out there, given what we're about to receive from people who are not taking accountability of their lives and the wrong choices they have made. Sadly, the brainwashing to keep people at odds and to covet others' blessings instead of being happy for them has been pervasive and a cancer within our society. The key is to be, I have found is to be happy for others and their success. And then when your turn in the rotation for success and blessings come, you will be celebrated in kind. Also, we want to make a correction out there for a lot of people to separate fact from fiction. There's a lot of discussion about the Zim. I've heard this over and over being meant for humanitarian purposes by a bunch of self-appointed gurus. Nothing could be further from the case. Using common sense and critical thinking is, is the key here. You bought the Zim just like you bought foreign currency. You got a receipt, it has your name on it. You are the owner, no one else. You do not need permission from anyone to be receiving a blessing that God gave you for free. What's yours is yours. It says it on the bond, payable to the bearer of note on demand, okay? You don't need a business plan. You don't need any humanitarian funds. And I have that news for you, 90% of humanitarian funds are not legit. There are some in the private placements, which none of you are in, or most of you are not in. So you don't need to worry about it. I've said it time and again, you're gonna be very, very happy with the rate of return because it's from God, he will bless his people. Do not fixate on that. And, and I see a lot of comments about the Boulevard. We've repeated it over and over and over again. We've even done a video on why the Boulevard makes sense, which you can visit on your own time in our archives section. But 
Do not worry about humanitarian projects. Do not be concerned with uh, business plans. We are going to do a video when it comes time to exchange with an actual wealth manager and a Wells Fargo Wealth Management Center, previous bank, still is a bank, but it's converted for wealth management vis-a-vis -vis the signs. And we'll show you the ins and outs, including NDAs. We are still standing by the fact that on the public, you will not need to sign an NDA. Do not be trapped by that. If a bank's not cooperating with you, simply go to another one. Just be professional, courteous, but stand your ground. Using critical thinking and discernment, folks, remains key in this entire time. Please don't believe conjecture and hearsay and rumors and abandon proper common sense, critical to your well-being in the days ahead. And this just came out uh, right now on my phone. So I'm going to read this to you. Um, we need to be praying for SG and on. We were scheduled, as you know, to have a podcast with him. He's come up ill with some dizziness and nausea. And so he's trying to obviously get better. So we are going to unfortunately have to move that podcast to next week. We appreciate your patience in advance. Things are out of our control. But uh, he, we just need to be praying for him for his healing and recovery. He is a vital part, as you all know, of this movement. That concludes today's wrap up. Anything urgent, we will come on and let you know as always. Otherwise, have a great and safe weekend. Enjoy the podcast, and we'll see you next week. Take care and bye for now.